story uh, that I've been covering, which I suppose is a byproduct of the Channel migrant crisis, surrounds the RNLI, the Royal National Lifeboat Institute. It has been around since 1824. It is an organisation that I have the most massive admiration for. I have stood outside Liverpool Street Station when I worked in a city, you know, with a box, collecting money for the lifeboats. I once even held a British beer festival with a colleague of mine in a square in Brussels, uh, where we got some barrels of beer over um, and we raised money for the RNLI. I am a supporter of the work they do. They go out in dangerous conditions, they save people, they rescue people. And that's all to the good. I've given them money personally too. I believe in the RNLI and I know many people involved with it. What I have said over the course of the last few weeks is that it is to be regretted that the RNLI in Kent particularly, partly in East Sussex, increasingly is becoming a taxi service for the illegal gangs pushing migrants across into the English Channel, has effectively become an arm of border force and that this is leading to division within coastal communities, questions that are being asked by RNLI crew. Uh, and that it's a problem, because people who give money to the RNLI are asking themselves, do we really want to give money for this? Now, I don't need to be told any lessons about the values of the RNLI or the need for it to raise money. I've been involved in it. I also don't need to be lectured by anybody about the dangers at sea. I was involved in a rescue two men in the water towards the end of last year. You know, I held this guy's hands. I wasn't sure he was going to make it. He had the early stages of exposure. I understand those that are coming here illegally are still human beings. Of course, I understand all of that. But I worry, I worry that the RNLI is doing the wrong thing. And today, I spoke to two lifeboatmen today, one of whom said, when the pager goes, you know, he knows it'll be migrant boats, but he goes and takes the call, he goes to sea. He said his anger was at the French and British authorities for doing so little that was leading to so many people taking risks with their lives. I spoke to another lifeboatman today who, after 15 years of service, and remember, these are volunteers, after 15 years of service, has resigned his position with the lifeboats because he's trying to run a business. Um, and we've seen instances of yachts breaking down, not being attended to, fishing boats whose engines are broken, washed up on the beach, not being towed away. And in response to me saying all of this, the RNLI have hit back. They've posted these videos showing the lifeboats out rescuing people. Yes, we know that's what the lifeboats do. But they've got a bit further than that. They've clearly, head office in Poole, have clearly employed a PR company. And what PR companies try to do is find some victims or find a victim and find somebody who is the baddie. I wonder whether the RNLI have used the same PR firm that Harry and Meghan are using. Because the victims are people working on the lifeboats and we're told they're having abuse shouted at them by members of the public. I can't say for certain that hasn't happened, but I can assure you I haven't said any abusive words to members of the lifeboat crews. I feel sorry for them and for their predicament. But the baddie, of course, is me. It's me daring to say, daring to say, and there we see the Guardian, you know, daring to say that the lifeboat service was being used for a different purpose and had become an arm of the border force. So I'm the baddie that's led to this situation that means horrible things are being said about lifeboatmen. I've seen it all before. I've fought against corporate organisations many, many times. All I can tell you is a very, very large number of people in our coastal communities are deeply disquieted by what's going on. And frankly, if I was running my own business on the south coast and I repeatedly kept being called out to sea to rescue migrant boats, which frankly, frankly, ought to be in many ways the job of the Border Force and the Royal Navy, who, rather than bringing them into British ports, should be, frankly, returning them to French ports. If this was costing me, as a businessman, that much money, I have to say I would consider my position. I have no desire to pick a fight with the RNLI. All I was doing was pointing out the truth. 
But if you, the bosses in Poole, want to pick a fight with me, that's fine by me. I fought people bigger and uglier than you in the past.